everybody, uh, Alex from Stratify here. <clears throat> We're doing a, a quick little video on uh, a mod that's kind of long overdue for our Ford Focus RS. So we're putting in an ETS from Mount Intercooler. I just wanted to walk you through a little bit through the uh, front end of this car because uh, it's it's an interesting little setup. So starting with uh, with here, here's obviously your, your fender liner and your windshield washer bottle. So on the ST, we use this for water methanol injection to store fluid. It's not very large. Uh, it looks to be just about under a gallon. So if your car consumes a lot of water meth and you want to rely on it, then it could run out in a track session, for example. If you just want to use it for the street, then this is fine. And we recommend it because you don't have to add another tank, but just be aware that it's about only about a gallon. Then we go here to the, to the front brake duct. So these seal up against the front bumper. As you can see, there's a little bit of damage to the foam uh, there, but uh, it's important to have sealing surfaces and we'll go over that with the front line intercooler as well. And uh, just walking across the front of the car, we've got our front mount intercooler. So Ford has done a good job in, in basically ducting and directing air. So the radiator here in the back is the AC condenser. And uh, they obviously you know follow all the way down behind the front mount. And this is the OEM front mount. So the OEM front mount, we've removed this plate a long time ago. Uh, it does improve its efficiency uh, a little bit more, especially in hot climates. Also note that there is uh, foam here and uh, this does help seal it up against the bottom of the bumper so we'll work with making sure that the sealing is it's all done. There's also foam here as much as possible with the upgraded front mount intercooler. It is uh, larger than the OEM so um, you want to make sure that, that this is all kind of taken care of uh, when you pull it all, all in and, uh, and you direct as much airflow through the front mount rather than around it. So air will follow the path of least resistance. And again, this is the, the secondary brake duct for the other wheel. So let's get that front mount in there and see what it looks like. Let's talk a little bit about the differences and similarities in the two front mount intercoolers. Uh, the OEM in the back here for the Focus RS and then the ETS, which we're upgrading to here in the front. So the purpose of the intercooler is obviously to cool the charge air. Charge air enters the intercooler on this side uh, it's hot from the compressor from being compressed to pressure above ambient and then it cools off across the core and uh, it uh, exits here and goes into the throttle body. Now the heat exchange process happens by air flowing into the front of the unit. You see that there are um, a lot of fins here. So cool air across the front of the unit uh, basically cools this and then it exchanges the heat uh, from uh, from the charged pressure or charged air that is inside the core. So that's how the heat exchange happens. Now, uh, a couple of differences that you can see right off the bat is that although the OEM unit is actually a, a relatively thick uh, core, the uh, ETS unit is, is thicker than that. You'll also notice that the end tanks are a, uh, an aluminum, whereas the OEM are plastic. Now, you don't really care about uh, that so much other than the fact that a plastic end tank attached to the aluminum core uh, of the OEM unit can actually leak after enough uh, enough years of use. These cars are relatively new so we haven't really seen that yet. Uh, the other aspect that you want to consider from an intercooler so its ability to to cool the charge air and uh, this is uh, a thicker core a much heavier core and although we don't like the weight penalty that we pay for this um, extended time under boost under high boost uh, you'll be able to take much longer time to heat soak a core like this versus the the OEM core which will heat soak quite a bit faster and uh, you can even tell that this is going to be the case uh, by the fact that you know this this uh, core is much much lighter uh, than than a core on the ETS so there's a lot more thermal mass it'll take a lot longer to for this to heat soak uh, the other aspect that you want to consider is pressure drop so uh, as boosted air enters this point and it travels across here every time you travel across a piece of pipe especially a, a constricted piece like this you lose pressure. So for example, if your turbocharger generates a 26 PSI at this point, by the time it travels across and it's ready to go into your throttle body, maybe you've lost one PSI. You'd consider that uh, one PSI pressure drop across the core. So you want to minimize that as much as possible. And um, a, a high quality core, uh, one that is quite, quite large, will always have a low pressure drop or should always have a low pressure drop. And the reason why that's important is that 
the the less work that your turbocharger has to do uh, in order to generate the boost that you desire at your at your manifold the more efficient it'll be the less heat it'll generate and that's kind of a, a um, you know domino effect where you have a more efficient turbo will be able to generate uh, more power and uh, your uh, intercooler itself will have to do less work to to cool that charge air that is now pressurized a little bit less the ETS intercooler is installed on the RS and I wanted to point out a couple of small details of uh, what we had to do here to make sure that everything was uh, was fitting correctly. So first of all, as you can see, we used T-clamps. The OEM charge pipes, which we still have, were a little loose on the, on the ETS uh, inlet and outlet of the intercooler. So we wanted to make sure that we don't have to pull the bumper off again or have to mess around with it. So use some T-bolt clamps. Uh, get them ahead of time so it doesn't surprise you. Another thing that you'll notice here is that uh, there's some insulating foam tape and I put this in between the intercooler and the uh, secondary heat exchanger which is actually the AC condenser. So I've done it on both sides and what this does is that it makes sure that the air that passes through the intercooler then is directed into the uh, AC condenser and, and most importantly the radiator. It doesn't escape here through the through the sides. So uh, the OEM does this some of this as well and you can notice that I also put some foam at the very bottom of the intercooler and uh, When I put the bumper back on I'm gonna make sure that it's actually um, it, it actually seals to the bottom of the bumper and I may have to also add several layers The foam is high density so as long as you got a clamp between the two heat exchanges it shouldn't move and it should better direct the air and make the overall uh, the overall cooling package on the on the vehicle more efficient. The bumper is back on on the Focus RS with the ETS front line intercooler installed. All the OEM baffles fit very nicely with this unit, which is very nice to see. As I've alluded to uh, in other uh, parts of this video, it's so important to make sure that we seal the front end of the unit to make sure that airflow goes into the coolers and not around them. A couple of those small improvements in the back of the unit that I've showed before, and uh, at the front of the bumper, you can't see it here, but we made sure that. The front mount intercooler has sealing tape also at the very bottom of it, ensure that we get the maximum cooling efficiency from the front mount as well as all the other coolers installed in the front of this car.